It's part 7 of the Gete campaign. Last time, we raided the Skordisi and stole a load of money from one of their settlements, thus funding our disastrous campaign even more. The Skordisi were, meanwhile, gradually conquering our home province. We did take out one of their armies and killed their king, and when they attacked our capital, I used some high-quality exploits to delay the inevitable there. Then, up north in Lugia, things are still not going very well, where we've got a rebellion coming at us at one of our towns. At first, it probably looks like I'm going for the exploit again, as I'm just abandoning the town. But this time, really, I'm just getting out of the town so we have some space. I don't want to fight in the confines of the town, because outflanking the enemy will be harder. The enemy surprised me, actually, because most of their units can hide in the open. So they didn't even come through the town, they actually came onto my flank and I didn't realise they were there until they started throwing jabs at me. I'm just going to run away in this case because I still want to draw this fight out into the open. And eventually more units show up and we start to get something like what I was going for. Although not really, because the AI was very interested in attacking my flanks. The whole plan was to draw them onto our militia in the centre, then outflank with the Falksman. But... It's not really happening because the enemy are just going for the Falksman right from the beginning. I guess that's not much of an issue because the Falksman can still charge in and do okay fighting from the front. These enemy units aren't that good, they're a medium spear unit, but they are elite. They're all level 4 because of rebel cheats. So I guess that makes them stronger than normal. In particular, they are stronger than our militia. So when they do start to take the bait and fight us here in the centre, this will not be going that well for us and we can't really help out because all of our flanking units are busy. At least the sacrifice of those militia is buying us good time, time we're using to gradually kill all of these units. We can use our archers to shoot into the flanks while they're chasing my Falksman, and this actually did a lot more damage than I thought it would. The garrison archers aren't completely trash as I expected them to be, so they did some damage, and gradually we're taking out unit after unit, and then once the enemy get really close we'll just charge in and commit to melee, because just like before, once we get them locked down our cav are waiting in the background, and the enemy have no answer to this. Plus, the Falksmen are actually pretty good. They don't have defense stats, so while they tend to win their engagements, they die in the process. But still, being able to cancel enemy units out is still useful. In this case, we hit them from one side with the cav and the other side with our archers, and that wipes out a whole load more of them, meaning this fight is slowly turning into a victory as suggested by the balance bar. We are losing units over in the center and left where other enemy units are just fighting us from the front and winning. But now everything can start folding in, we'll get all the Falksmen and Archers back into the fight. And our Cav of course have free reign, the enemy are all committed so we can just cycle charge and rear attack to our hearts content. And of course our hearts will not be content until all of these disgusting rebels are dead. So I'm cutting now to a bit later, here's me outflanking with the Falksmen, one of the big blocks of enemy troops. And that's going to be devastating since when they rout they'll get killed since they're attacked from multiple sides. And they are going to rout because of this move, I cycle charge their general. And after a couple of rounds, this persuades him to rout. We didn't actually kill the general, which I should have focused on more in retrospect because of what you'll see in a second. Here's where the result goes. Basically, we didn't lose the garrison, and it doesn't matter what losses we did take because they'll just come back. The rebels lost everything except a few troops in their general's unit and the general himself. And that technically means the rebellion is still going, so we will have to deal with that again. And we've got another rebellion going on. This is over at a kink, the place we took from the Skordisi by accident, actually. They've got a tiny rebellion. It might be possible to defeat them in a manual resolve, but it doesn't matter. So I just allowed them to win there. And that's going to create a new faction. And that faction was really willing to get peace with us. So we got peace and some cash off them, which overall resolves that situation quite nicely. To the north, we've got a situation to deal with. The Lugos are still besieging Bedorgas. They've already taken it twice by this point, but they keep not occupying it. So we still have it with just a few troops inside and they're still besieging it, meaning the war hasn't really advanced on that border, which is great because we needed that time. Our main force is gradually coming over to participate. I'm being careful here not to advance too far so that I don't cross into the next region and can still get replenishment. Luckily, I don't think I had enough movement to do it there anyway. Now down south, we're going to make our big move for this turn. The force that's already taken out one of the Skordisi armies is now at their capital. The balance bar is super far in their favour because they have a big and decent, I suppose, garrison. So I'm going to just put some siege equipment in the queue 
and wait, because with that advantage the enemy will probably sally and will get the chance to fight that garrison in the field where things will be generally easier. However, while we wait for that, we do still have the issue that there's an enemy army right next to our capital and just like it did previously, it attacks. So we've got the same battle that we exploited our way out of last time and really, we can do it again but this will just keep happening. I wasn't really sure what to do here because constantly exploiting to avoid death does seem a bit cheap and I do sometimes like to avoid doing exploits if they're not really necessary to actually progress. However, my attempt to fight this battle normally went out of the window quite quickly. The only real idea I had was to get out of the town and then start moving in lots of different directions at once to break open the many pike phalanx units that the enemy have. If we can get them on their own, they're not so dangerous, especially if they get stuck in some sort of weird glitched shield wall as we've seen the Germanic pike phalanx units do before. The problem was the enemy were quite proactive, they didn't dally going into the town, so I had to fight them before I was done running away and that's going to ruin even a regular run away from the enemy until the timer runs out sort of plan, but just gonna go with it, we'll see if we can take down some enemy units while we're here. These archers were supposed to take down the enemy's javcav, but they're all standing on top of each other, so like 10% to half of them are actually firing at any one time. The solution there is to get them to reform so they're definitely not blocking each other's line of sight. But the enemy ran out of ammo at this point and dove in for a melee, and then, now they're stuck fighting our militia, our archers can absolutely go to town on them. Meaning that whatever happens, we'll at least have mostly killed this one javcav unit. And I thought we can still potentially get running away and get those pike units out in the open and see if we can cheekily bring some down, but there's one big problem with that plan. These pike units are really fast, they absolutely sprint across the battlefield for some reason despite being a really heavy unit. And in particular, they're faster than my guys can run away despite being light units, so we are screwed, I guess the enemy have been doing some fitness training and we just can't run away from them. Therefore, any sort of breaking them up plan just won't work, because whatever unit starts kiting them will just die, and really running away is the only option here, and it's not even a very good option. We're out of options, I guess that's what I'm saying. There were a few potential exploits I had in mind though. I thought maybe if I fight them for like two seconds, that will cause the AI to put them into their shield wall or phalanx formation, and then we'll see the weird thing where they just kind of get stuck, plus in shield wall they can barely move, and the AI might forget to take them out of shield wall, allowing us to escape. But all that doesn't happen, they do actually go into shield wall, but the AI cleverly takes them out again as they begin the pursuit. So yes, we're losing more and more units as we try to escape, this isn't going very well, it's not really a last stand, just a running away and getting killed session, but there's still hope, you can see we're near the buildings that caused the exploit win last time, so I started leading the enemy towards those buildings just to see if it would happen again, and it didn't. We saw an example of what's supposed to happen, the enemy formations do break up temporarily to go around the buildings, but then they come back together and continue on as before. So, no exploits yet, but you can still see I'm going for some heavy running away strats, I'm trying to run to the opposite corner. There's still a chance that we can get the old running away victory from this situation. By doing this, we can start splitting the army up. Because the enemy's sight range isn't that large, like those units I have in the background there are hidden for some reason, we can just make it so the enemy doesn't know where all of our units are. And that will buy us an enormous amount of time because this map is so big it will take them ages to find us. So I've got these three units that are too slow to run away anyway and they're just going to be a sacrifice. And the enemy's entire army goes after them which is great, this buys us a lot of time. Now I'm going to use these units to run past the enemy army and try and get them to turn around because if we can start getting them to move west it's going to take them so long to move back to the east after they're done killing us that this will actually progress us towards getting a cheeky timer exploit win. So worth trying. Strangely, they only really pursue this group with one unit, despite bringing their whole army over to form up in front of them. That one unit isn't their super fast pikes, so we have a chance of escaping even with our slow militia, but they do eventually catch up. As for what their pikes are doing, well they're going back to the town because while that was going on I decided to cheekily recapture the town with my townsfolk just to be a bit more proactive than going for a pure sit in the corner and do nothing sort of win. But that causes the entire enemy army to get aggroed back to the town. 
This actually saves the lives of some of these militia, because while they routed within about 5 seconds of the enemy actually catching up, that unit then goes to rejoin the army in the town, so the other guys escape and continue to hide in the corner. Also hiding are the townsfolk, they got out of there once the enemy came back and I can just hide them in the forests near the town. Does mean the town will once again belong to the enemy but this doesn't do anything. I think in Rome 2 the capture point only gives you a morale buff if you're actually standing on the capture point, it's not battlefield wide like in some other games, so actually holding the town does nothing. And then afterwards, here's the critical moment, the enemy army decides to move out of the town and go back towards where it last saw my two militia units in the top left of the map. This is strange because it wasn't walking towards where I actually was and normally the AI just kind of cheat smells where you are if you're entirely hidden and comes towards you anyway, but sometimes it doesn't. I've definitely seen it not do it before as well, normally in exploit battles like this. Maybe it can only do it towards the start of the battle. So basically, they're walking off into the corner, and I'm not there, so this is going to waste an enormous amount of time and get us closer to winning, and then, for some reason, boom, we've got them boys. Once they arrived at their destination, they just did the exploit thing somehow. I don't even know what happened, their formation just absolutely exploded for no known reason, so we got them. I wasn't even trying to exploit them this hard, but somehow in this battle the AI pulled out every possible breakdown that's in the game and they've just achieved a fantastic defeat on themselves, albeit with a little prompting from me. This was me half trying to win with exploits after I realised that doing anything reasonable wasn't going to work. But interestingly, towards the end of the fight, I accidentally undid the exploit. I went and captured the town again. And this, I guess, resets the AI and puts them into offensive mode again so they can go retake the town. But this also undoes the glitch, all of their units reform and come together. So that's an interesting discovery, I guess. Doesn't matter much because all of that stuff took so long that we won a heroic victory on the timer in the end anyway. Bit more action than last time, we did actually take out an enemy unit and we somehow didn't lose any units ourselves because our units route at such high strength that they tend to survive after the battle. So that's all good and now after that we've got a real fight. The sally I was hoping for does happen and the balance bar is reversed from what we saw when we arrived at the town. So that's good, it's a very standard fight here with a really boring map. It's completely flat and open, so I just form up the troops in a line and wait for the enemy garrison to attack. The balance bar's evened out now, but still I think we do have the advantage in that the enemy can't really break through that front line. They lack heavy units. Here they're almost using tactical townsfolk. They charge in with the townsfolk first, and they do absorb a load of arrows and stuff, so maybe the AI is learning. Their better units, their Celtic warriors, are coming in on the flanks and I've got my elite Hoplite units ready to face them. I'm also doing the thing I did with this army previously where I put all of the archers in a big block on the left and they can collectively just gun everything down that comes near them and start working their way up for some form of flank attack since we do lack for cavalry in this army. The enemy generals having no luck trying to break through our center, neither are all of their infantry for that matter. The archer block is doing its work. I've got some mercenary swords or something out there aggroing enemy units. And now that everything's in place, we just rain arrows down and we can quickly rout everything away. Once you kill like half of these garrison units, they just leave. There are also lots of enemy skirmishers about who are doing some damage to us. I'm trying to shoot them with my archers as well. I could be attacking them with my one unit of heavy cav with the general. However, I was using him to mainly actually attack routing units because this is a siege drawout. The garrison army won't be deleted if this army is defeated, so we have to kill them on the field to make sure we end up with an easy siege scenario after this. So that's why the general was not really helping, but eventually I brought him back to actually get this battle won. We can easily finish off what the enemy had left on the left and then move in for a massive flank attack. Plus now all surviving enemy skirmishers will just be run down by the heavy cav. Here another case of unsupported skirmishers on the wing but now these weak enemy units just can't do anything about it. They can try and drive towards my skirmishers but a massive rain of arrows is cutting these guys down even from the front where the shield bonus somewhat mitigates the damage. Basically at this point in the fight there are just a few enemy units and we need to get the surround and pound going 
both to finish them off and to try and inflict maximal casualties because of the reinforcement no delito thing that I mentioned earlier. Will be a struggle for our slower units like the Hoplites because they can't really catch anything, but charging archers into melee and stuff eventually does the business, and we get ourselves to this point where the garrison is basically dead, we can just auto-resolve the remnants once it's our turn. They also lost their general in the main army, which is actually a bad thing because he'll just respawn at full health, making the next battle a tiny bit harder actually, would have been better to not kill him. If anyone was wondering what's happening with the economy, nothing good. We're tanking money even more than usual because I had to stop taxing Lugia due to food problems. Couldn't actually work out what was causing the food problems, I think it might be seasonal and the effect of all the warring doing some things that are hidden in the tooltip somewhere that I couldn't find. But basically, we're running out of time when it comes to money. But at least we've got something good happening for us. We can go and do that auto resolve on the remaining Scordisi garrison. And that is their capital at our mercy. Now this was a chance to get the raising or sacking thing that we need to progress towards our bonus objective. But in this case, doing a liberation is so advantageous that I just couldn't resist. Making ourselves a little state here to be on our side will make this general area of our territory way safer and give us someone to trade with, which might make us some cash in the long run. So we do go ahead with that and we create the Scordisi Confederation just another Scordisi faction basically, but this time they're on our side, and I was able to get them to declare war on the original Scordisi. So that's good, and that original Scordisi faction is now just the bit of territory they own in my province, so they don't have much left. All we need to do then is take our army here and get over there. We can move to a position where we're one turn away from being able to retake that territory. However, we now get a third assault on our capital, and this time I decided to do things a little bit differently. I decided, you know what? You can have it. I know some people probably wanted me to try the exploit again here or something, but I thought, after two hacked wins, let's just let the enemy have a win. We'll auto-resolve the battle and see what happens. The interesting thing here is that they did not actually occupy the territory, they just sacked it or something. And that's interesting because it means they still only have one territory and we're one turn away from taking it, meaning the Scordisi are potentially on the verge of absolute destruction even after that win against us. Now up north, a major battle takes place. The Lugos attack Bodogis before my main force can arrive to support, but for some reason, one of their armies isn't participating. They're attacking only with this smaller group, and their main group isn't here. And we do have quite a few troops inside, more than last time this happened, and our troops are actual units rather than garrison. So overall, this is a battle we can do something in, and the thing I wanted to do was try out some fresh new exploits. Firstly, I've barricaded off the route to our town centre. The idea there is that because it takes the enemy actually quite a long time to go through a barricade, we might be able to win on time if we can stall the enemy for ages and then have like 10 minutes left at the end where they just can't get through the barricades. But here's the main thing I was thinking, we're just going to attack right away to see if we can disrupt the siege. It's not always clear how this works, but sometimes in Total War, if you attack siege engines with melee units, they just kind of get forgotten about or disabled, and in that way we can reduce the number of ladders coming at us. But as you can see here, it doesn't really work. My cav get driven away by a massive volley of javs, and the enemy haven't considered themselves to be switched into melee mode, so they're still on the siege engine, and it still advances. I'm not sure exactly what you have to do to get this to work, but I've seen it work in other cases, so it can be done. I tried again attacking another ladder at the end of the line with our few remaining horsemen. And like before, it's not enough. The horsemen die quite fast, and whatever you need to do to get the enemy to commit to just fighting in melee and dropping the siege engine, siege engine didn't happen. We can also, of course, try to set the ladders on fire, but it's just not happening, and here's a close case study of it not happening. I've got all my units ordered to attack one enemy coming right at them down the center, and they're all firing at other targets for some reason, they're just not even doing it. And of course you can't order them to attack the ladder itself, so even the scant probability of hitting it there has been reduced to essentially zero, and no progress is being made. I've also sent troops to attack the enemy's ram pushers, stopping that ram will make our life a lot easier, 
but our men aren't being very aggressive in making their attack, so the enemy just kind of walked past and ignored us. However, I pursued and ended up with two militia units trying to fight the guys on the ram, and actually once the ram was in position, they do turn and join the melee properly, and now that the ram has been dropped technically, it's not ramming the gate, so at least we've bought ourselves some time. Elsewhere, the enemy's ladders make it, none of them was destroyed, and the fighting begins. But unlike the previous attempt at a battle just like this, we do have some of our Germanic levy, who are better than Dacian militia in melee, so we can survive for much longer once the enemy are over the walls. And look at this, while everyone attacking the ram died, the ram was permanently dropped. We got the thing to happen on the ram, the unit that was pushing it forgot and decided to come and climb up the ladder instead, meaning the gates will remain closed for this battle, making our life ever so slightly easier. Also, a lot of the units glitched out and did nothing for a long time, probably as a result of that as well. Here's a fun thing the AI often does by mistake also. They've got their ranged units shooting at the ram and at the gatehouse. The line of sight checking isn't very good in siege battles, so they can waste ammunition just shooting into walls, and that's just what they're doing there, perhaps saving loads of lives on our side. I've got these longbowmen in this army, and they're doing quite well. I've got them up on a hill shooting down into the enemy's blob near the gate, and they've already routed one unit because they're shooting at the routers right there. I think at this point I do retarget them onto something else. So yes, we can rain arrows down onto the blob, and those longbowmen are much more powerful than the regular garrison archers you get, so we can actually expect to pick up a couple of hundred kills shooting into the blocks. Over at this other section that's under attack, Things are going quite well, we've got like 5 units of half-dead garrison archers doing some damage, but actually it's just our Germanic levies holding the line. I guess because they're at maximum stamina and stuff, and they do have a couple of level ups, they're doing really well against all this enemy medium infantry. The enemy's morale is clearly shaken by something because they're just routing all over the place, and we're going to kill as many of them as possible. We can really pick up the enemy's army losses by slaughtering everything as they run away. We've got some more archers over here with no ammunition who are perfect for that. The towers are also going to be doing some work in this group because the towers are quite close. The towers have a lot more accuracy when they're really close to the target. And there, caught on camera, an example of the tower actually killing an enemy. It definitely does happen sometimes. Anyway, this group is in trouble. They've taken so many losses that we're able to rout them without anything particularly fancy going on. And once they rout, of course, they're going to be slaughtered. They have to rout back to our gate to get out. So they'll rout through our formation and we'll kill basically all of them. The enemy's army losses are going to start mounting and that balance bar is slowly moving into our favor. This is starting to look pretty good. We've also got some routes on the other side, on the other attack approach. Our longbowmen are out of ammo, but again we've got a tower shooting at close range and we just have lots of troops here including the Germanic levies who for some reason aren't routing even after taking lots of casualties, so it's all going well. And after a few minutes more of this fight, we just get it, all of the units in the block rout at once and that's going to be a win for us. We did take a hammering on some of our units, but we didn't see routes, our morale was good enough that we can do this. It was only the fact that we had such terrible militia before that stopped us from holding the enemy in place and just tiring them out and wearing them down. Anyway, now as the enemy escape, we're going to slaughter absolutely loads of them. The battle is still going though because their general, who's standing outside the gate, is in the fight still. He's actually trying to burn the gate down. They're trying to throw flaming torches towards the gatehouse to get in, but the ram that was left behind is in the way, so nothing is happening. I think if I just left them to it, we'd eventually win, because not only might the timer run out, but our towers are extremely slowly killing that general's unit. But we need to save some real life time, so I send out some units to actually fight these guys. And we've got our general with his heavy hoplites, who are the perfect counter. We start hacking away. And then I send in all of the remaining levies as well, and they just absolutely overwhelm this general's unit, and they get taken down. And with that, we are going to be taking our victory. A close victory, we did take some decent losses, but the enemy army is totally trashed. Albeit the smaller of the two main enemy armies in this region, still, that's an important win. And with the imminent arrival of our main force, we might actually be able to turn this situation around. Well, see how it all ends up in the next part.